Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we've got Shem. Uh, Shem, I didn't ask you how to pronounce your last name, so I'm going to take a crack at it. I'm going to get it wrong. Shem Magnesi, is that right? Yeah, pretty good. Oh, okay, I, I'm going to take 80%, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> so uh, to, to make to make sure that I did say, can you, can you just say your name for everyone so that they don't also mispronounce it if I just did? Yeah, so Shem Magnesi. If you if you are uh, no Hebrew or Israeli, so it's pretty easy. For the rest of us, is Mackenzie, Mackenzie, whatever you like. Oh, okay, all right, I see. Yeah, uh, Shem Magnesi. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so you and I have had a chance to to meet at a conference and, and spend a little time together. But for folks who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a little bit of a background on yourself? Yeah, sure. So. I'm Shem. I'm a software engineer for the past, I don't know, 15 years. Um, I started in small startups around like backend stuff, data engineering, big data. Then I moved to the dark side, uh, a little bit of user interfaces, started with mobile, mm. uh, iOS and Android, uh, and then moved to web apps, uh, mostly React. Okay. Um, I've been, uh, as I said, sm very small startup. Then I moved to bigger ones, AVG in Israel. Then WeWork, um, then Meta, Facebook, and then uh, a year ago I started with a couple of my friends, Wilco, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Wilco. I think this is like the main thing that we're gonna invest time here, um, and this is a very cool tool that we. This is a lot of time to let other people, engineers, to practice their skills um, and to grow and upskill in the very, very fun way, as you can see in a minute. Yeah. So so before we jump into how it works, I, I want to do a little bit of understanding of the, the problem space, because at, at first blush, it's easy for me to say... I don't get why we would need this, right? Because because there's so much material, and I'm I'm, I'm intentionally setting up like I, I actually do see a, a use for this, but it's easy for me to just go. I don't know. I don't know if we need another dev training tool because there's so much. Like we have boot camps, we have so many tutorials. There's courses. There's all this educational material, and it's all geared toward making people, helping people learn development, right? So. What what is the specific need that Wilco fills that's not being filled by all of these these other resources? First of all, I agree. There is tons of material, and there are great whether are videos, uh, streams, tutorials, workshops, uh, and in front of a uh, class. Wilco is like not for learning how to code, but it's more to upskill yourself. We assume okay. you know the basics. Uh, but now you want to level up. You want mm. to explore new things. You want to to try and practice um, how to develop features in high load systems. How to uh, fixing bugs in a very complex network mesh. Um, mm. How to work on production environment and fixing um, production issue that while there are users and stuff like this. And those real task like mimic real environment are somehow missing yeah yeah so that's definitely something that that makes sense to me because if i think about like most of the materials that i find are teaching you a new skill kind of in the in the academic sense like you're you're going to work through like, what are the concepts? How do they fit together? How do I how do I put this stuff together? But you're right. There's not a lot of material that that is okay. I'm I'm in the midst of a mess, right? I just joined this company. There's a ton of legacy code that I haven't had a chance to review. We've got we've already got people who pay us for things, so I can't just turn it all off and figure out how it works. We can't just start over. How do I actually solve problems in an environment that I didn't build or that I am not familiar with? Um, and and that's interesting too because. The other thing is most of us build that skill set on the job, right? So yeah. so I know that for me, 
I have a very specific set of skills because I've worked at a very specific lineage of companies. I worked at IBM, so I worked on UI problems for cloud-based companies. And then I worked at Gatsby, so I have a lot of skills around working inside of GraphQL, working inside of React code bases. I've worked at Netlify, so I have a lot of, of skill around like deployment of front ends in, in various fashions, but I've never worked in like a microservices, like deep microservices architecture or d dived into a, a legacy, you know, like, I don't know, some kind of like backbone app that we're trying to incrementally migrate to a new stack. Like those aren't, those are skills that I kind of have by proxy because I've been doing this for 20 years, but like, I've never practiced that. I can't go do rep. So you're saying that Wilco is that? Yes, even uh, oh. I will add to it, like even if we, we uh, you and me work in the same company, uh -huh. but we went to different teams mm -hmm. and your team working on a very cool product and you're growing like crazy and you have tons of users and you got like two senior engineers that mentor you. And I went to a little different team. Okay. And we are working mostly on bugs and maintenance and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So we are working in the same company, but opportunities are different. Mm -hmm. We want to create some kind of sandbox, like a training ground for me and you and everyone to practice, whether it's like high load, very, very intensive uh, tasks, right. or working in a huge, huge, huge code base and fixing legacy code. Gotcha. Okay. And so this is really exciting because that, and, and so um, the, the intention then is like, I would use Wilco if I'm the, the CEO or the CTO of a company and I want, I want to provide educational materials so that my engineers aren't just getting better at our code base. They're getting better at other types of code bases that we might become. So it's sort of like right. uh, if we're a, a scaling startup, we haven't hit those super high load issues or or things like that. We're we're new, but we know it's coming because we're seeing growth, right. and we know that in in another six months, if we keep growing at the rate we're going, we're going to have tens of thousands of users or whatever it is, and that's going to mean way more database load or whatever problems it is that we have based on the the type of data that we have. I want my engineers to go learn in a way that doesn't require us to learn by accidentally breaking production or by missing yes. a delivery date. That's... Yes. Uh, for for example, I work in an Angular, yeah, and we we know we want to migrate to React. Okay. And for most of the use cases, I go to React course, uh, do a to do list app, play with this, and come back. But it's not in the real life, right? Right. Right. So do some quests in React, play it with like real code base, real features, real mm -hmm. API, and see if it fits. Got you. Yeah, this is okay. So that's exciting. That that feels like the sort of thing that it's always been missing in my career um, because it's it's not a thing you can go do easily. You you learn that by consulting. That's certainly not accessible to everybody. You learn that by uh, by having lots of spare time to go work on open source or or go volunteer at at other companies if like an, you know nonprofits or something. But like not all of us have that kind of time. Some of us have families, some of us have other obligations, or we just don't want code to be our whole life, but we still want to level up. So this is a way that I can spend my education budget and level up on the job using that 20% time or something like that, right? Like that's really exciting to me because it, it, it gives me an opportunity to level up on the job in a way that won't happen in a lunch and learn or in, in one of those other spaces. Like you can learn it by pairing with people, but that's assuming that you're not the most senior person on your team or that the person who is the most senior is a good teacher or has the time. I mean, a lot of them just aren't, right? Like they're, they're super slammed because they've made the mistake of being the most capable person in the room. Right. <laughs> and okay. so, um, yeah, okay, so this is exciting. So um, what, how did you land on this? Like where did this, this idea come from to, to start this? So, like, it's a long process. Like, uh, it's not like one night. It was some of us like think about it, and in the mid uh, the middle of the night, us text each other. I think me and my co-founder are engineers. Like, we are doing a lot of engineering work. Some of us led a, a big group. Some of us build side projects and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And we asked ourselves, like, 
how we become such knowledgeable, how we learn new stuff, how we know how to build those kind of products. And we always say, okay, we had shy project. We landed in an amazing team that just started from scratch. We had an amazing mentor that took us and uh, uh, help us how to uh, and show us how to um, fix bug in production by let us doing, it, not just mm-hmm. lecture us. And we always say that learn by doing, by doing this, like watching on your hand, like fail, fail, like breaking production one after another. You know how to, you learn how what's wrong. You know, you you got, uh, you create some gut feelings. You understand how to integrate new stuff. You learn a lot of things by failing and trying. Mm-hmm. So we, we want to create some kind of training ground to try and try and try and play and do it in a fun way. Mm-hmm. We always have like side project in our head, but side project and open source contribution has some uh, some uh, problems, right? You, you want to build stuff, but there is a lot of boilerplate and you don't know how to start. Then you get to a certain place where uh, it's just too hard for you. And you want to create some kind of scaffolding for these side projects that you can learn and, and, and jump uh, between stages. Mm-hmm. So it's more like a collective ideas that we roll between us for a couple of months. Got you. Got you. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Well, cool. So um, the the mentoring piece here, is that is that in Wilco as well? So I, I know we're, we're jumping into a real code base and we're going to get practice in something that's a little more scaled up or advanced or, or just a different niche than we usually code in. Um, how do you handle that, that mentorship thing where you need someone to kind of walk you through this new thought process? So we have a couple of processes. One of them is more automatic way. Okay. Like you, and, and you will see, you get some kind of guidance for a couple of, from a couple of boats throughout the way. And you are able to ask for hints and you ask, you are able to, uh, to read some material around it. Um, and we have the um, the community. Mm-hmm. We have Slack. Or, uh, we have a Discord server where you are able to ask some question, and we encourage people to help you and, and give you some uh, help. So you are able to um, both help to to others and and get some help. Mm-hmm. And in the future, we we are planning to be able to play some kind of multiplayer. So oh, you are cool. doing your t- tasks and you open PRs and you, you do some stuff. So you are able to invite people, whether from your company, your senior engineer, or other people in, in, that you don't uh, actually know, but they are able to, to help you uh, and you are able to progress throughout the way. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So this is, yeah, this is very cool. So let's, let's see. All of my other questions are about like actual functionality. So I'm going to, I'm going to swap us over here and let's go into pair programming mode. Camera two. Uh, And so now what I want to do is get this off the screen because that's going to be disconcerting for folks. And instead we're going to do a quick shout out to our captioning. We've got Amanda here with us today from white coat captioning, taking down all these words. So it is more accessible to anybody that is on the homepage of the site at learnwithjason.dev if you want to follow along there. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight. Uh, We're also working on getting finalized with New Relic to get that up there. So thank you to New Relic. Um, And we're talking to Shem today. So you can go and give Shem a follow here on the Twitter. Uh, And we're talking about Wilco. Now, Wilco is currently invite only. So I have uh, I have gotten a a special invite so that I can get in here. Um, And this is the first step of the flow after I authenticated with GitHub. So this is as much as I know about Wilco. Um, And let's maybe let's look at uh, Wilco.com. This is the home page of Wilco. Let me share this with everyone. So you've got a link. Um, If you want to go request access, you can do that. Shim, what should I do first? So this is onboarding, okay? This is like you sign up and this is the, the first screen that you show, right? So, okay, let's, let's see. see. Hmm, I'm gonna say intermediate. 
That feels right. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> so I know I know React, I know Node. Um, I get so some... actually this is like what we are building in a system right uh, here. Okay, oh, you're gonna cool. get a production ready system. So do you want this production uh, system will be written with React and Node or React and Ruby? And we're gonna add a couple of more languages soon, very soon. Mm -hmm. One of them is already in A-B test, but this is like what you choose. Like this system, this team that you're gonna join, is it working on Node or Rails? Okay, this is what they are, this is the onboarding. Right. Yeah. And so I, I've only written enough Ruby to get myself in trouble. So we're definitely going to stick with node. I know node and, and express. Um, now with these, this is how it's deployed. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so if I click mostly, Kubernetes, am I, am I jumping into Kubernetes config? So you will get definitely going to get Docker setup. Okay. Um, and those will affect what quest you're gonna get or recommendation for quest at least in the beginning gotcha okay um so maybe i'll say containers because i i know enough docker or actually you know what let's learn i want to learn kubernetes okay um yes. I, we're not sure we're gonna get to kubernetes yeah, that's it's very fine. advanced that's but fine. we can do uh good. yeah kubernetes and what cicd that seems that seems okay yeah okay all right i'm gonna hit next um I want to learn, we'll say front end and back end. Uh, someday I would do these things, but you yeah, know, the, this cool. is this is probably where where I'll get the most value in my day to day, right? Um, yes. And then let's see. Oh yeah, communication. I like that. Yeah, you you can see there are all not only hard skill. You would say there is also communication. How to mm -hmm. communicate problems? How to write documentation? How to debug some uh, some problems, how to set up your environment and things like this. So it's not only learn Rails or learn how to right. deploy a Docker container. No, I love that. I think that's great. Um, so is there one that I like should pick because you love the way that it works? Um, let's pick documentation because documentation. this is like counterintuitive. Okay, yeah, let's do it. All right, here I go. Um, meet anything. All right. So is this my, this is my company now? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> are you familiar with anything? You're probably not as it doesn't exist. It's your, also your new workplace. Don't worry. It all makes perfect sense. Facing real world challenges that require real world tools to solve is better when there's a purpose to it all. Anything will give you that purpose. While working at anything, you'll use snack, our totally original corporate messenger, which isn't anything. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Uh, okay, so then we go in, get ready to get things. Okay, so will coins are a currency which you spend on support from your anything teammates. Okay, so I, like I do work, and then I can basically use that to uh, ping somebody for help or hints. Yeah. So okay. You, example, you want to buy some hints. You want to skip some quests. You want to okay. buy some swag. Okay. Mm. So we have coins. We have achievement. We have experience points. Everything like you know from uh, your regular games. Got and it. Now you get Got it. into uh, the actual scene. Okay, it's very uh, quest-like. We want Love to it. We want you to feel like you enter a world. Okay, so we're gonna dive in. We're gonna get into our corporate messenger, set up GitHub, and then we get quests. All right, here we go. Okay, so are you ready for your first day at anything? I am, I am ready. Oh my goodness, I love this. Uh, you're now connected to Snack. And okay, good. Oh so <laughs> introducing Ness. This is horrifying. Great. Uh, okay, so I read your personnel file last night. It's extremely impressive. That's great. I lied on half of it. Um, see one thing that was missing in your file an oversight on the part of our investigator is your drink preference oh yeah i want coffee cool all right <laughs> so ness in the end of the day is your team lead okay she welcome you she will help you throughout those quests whether uh whatever we choose and as you can see there is the uh, world renewed marketplace uh -huh. Okay, 
there is the link. Click on the link. Let's see what we are working on in this company. Okay. Nice. So like there, the there, vaporwave. This is the, yeah. So this is the, the company we work on. There is some kind of e-commerce with very, very weird product, right? Uh-huh. Uh, we, and you're going to circle back to, to those products and you, you are able to investigate it. Like this is a real, like never stop rolling uh, dice. And there is users, there is tags, there is a yeah. product page. Um, and we're going to build features. We're going to fix some bugs. We're going to um, re-architect this, uh, this system. Gotcha. Okay. 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 All right. So, so I have a, a DM from Navi. Okay. DevOps team lead. Got it. Okay. Uh, write your GitHub username. And we'll add you as a contributor. Okay. Cool. Oh dang! So, Navi is is maybe the most uh, the most responsive DevOps engineer I've ever worked with. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna work on those delays. We need to, to increase <laughs> to, to make sure it's really I'll, I'll get reliable. To this sometime between today and next month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very busy. Uh okay. We actually so... created um a persona for each bot. Oh, I love our that. Product manager, a product our product manager that work in a couple of escape rooms created a, a page for each person. Mm. Like what is like, where does he live, what kind of humor you use, everything in between. It's like very, very like inspirational to see this work behind the scenes. That's, that's so as really you see, fun. Uh, as you saw, you right now have a GitHub repository yes. dedicated for you. Okay. Um, the front end contain the React app. Okay. So let's. The back end uh, contain um, the node app, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to do one of these. We'll do a GitHub repo clone. All right, so now I have my repo here and I can open this up. And let's make sure that this is uh, not missing any pieces. Okay, so that's good enough. Dismiss, we don't, Copilot started asking for money and I feel like Copilot and I might yes. be, we might have broken up. Um, all right, <laughs> so we've got a back end, we've got a front end. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, remember we, we said we need some kind of sandbox. So this mm. is your sandbox. Don't afraid to rein it up. Oh. We are able behind the scene to recreate it, reshuffle it, make it to stable. Don't afraid to ruin it. Mm -hmm. This is like what I'm most passionate about. Like we give people the opportunity to fail, to break without like losing their minds got okay. it got it okay so all right so talk to navi and now officially prepared let's see oh carl okay let's look at our first project okay so now you get to the work of feed okay okay you can drop this um not now right so you finished the tutorial you didn't even know this but you huh. finish your first quest. Uh, Love it. First quest. Um, and I guess you get a couple of will coins and achievement and stuff like this. Great, great. Okay, okay so on to my next okay. quest. Yes. So this is the internal portal, right? Got it. The first thing that you do in your first day, setting up your local environment, right? Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you are able to 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 make it work, and you are able to see messages right now. Okay. Yeah. Start. This. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> There's really good subtle trolling all over this app. This is well done. Yes, all the Easter eggs and stuff like this. We investing the tons. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, let's see. So. Uh... First, set it up. Let me know once you're ready. Um, all right, probably don't need two of those open. So I've got okay, the repo. Just so when you're ready. 
I'm ready. Cool. Okay, dibs. Okay. <laughs> Excited to meet Ben. Anyway, the dib. Let's see, we need Docker. Docker lets us run things locally, got that. So let's install Docker. And I'm pretty sure I already have it. Let's check. Oh no, all right, let's install Docker. It will take a minute or so. I got the Apple chip. And I also have the fiber internet, which is going to be a big bonus for us right now. Yeah. Okay, so here comes Docker. And now I can open that up. All right. There it goes. And here, like, we use Docker to make sure people will be able to make it up and running as fast as possible. We are working on a couple of more things. You, for example, you don't have to install Docker. You can use it like your own tools, run React, run Rails. But mm -hmm. we believe Docker is an easier way because we chose um, Kubernetes and containers in before. Uh, and we also work on other stuff like get an instance environment. Mm -hmm. Instead of, of installing Docker, maybe you get a machine with Docker installed and everything. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and you know, I, I think that's a decision that a lot of companies make because DevOps is hard, like setting up all of the different services and making sure you've got the right versions and everything's plugged together is, it's just challenging. So giving somebody yes. a Docker container, it's like, hey, we can figure this. All you have to do is turn it on. Um, yes, and, and, cool. and we always think about what would be in real life if I, i'm a cto how my first i uh, my employee first day will look like mm -hmm. yes they will need to install docker and get github and everything right yeah yeah this and this is also what you know this is the sort of thing that like you you see this and you go oh no oh, wait what does this mean docker desktop needs privileged access you will be asked for your password okay um And we also see, like, we work with a couple of boot camps. And, for example, boot camps graduates are learn how to program, how to write Python scripts, how, what is for loops, what is um, variables, um, mm -hmm. what is a web page. But they don't know how it's like to work with a team, how it's mm -hmm. like to work on GitHub, what it's like to set up a, a, an existing uh, uh, system from scratch. Right. So, they only know um, like a blank uh, canvas type of now what it's like to join a real company, a real team. Sure, yeah. Um, and I don't know if we just had a little bit of a of a network hiccup, and I don't know if that's because Docker's doing a bunch of stuff in the background, or if, if your internet is rebelling a bit. But uh, I think we caught most of that. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are waiting for the Docker desktop to start. And while we're waiting for that, we can go back here and look at our chat. Okay, we have to let know when we're done installing Docker, which we are almost done doing. Let's see, I'm done with that. And okay, now it says it's done. So I'm going to just, okay. I'm going to go back and say I'm done. Yes. I'm, and I'm using my official work persona where everything ends in a uh, <laughs> in an exclamation point to show that I'm not a jerk. Uh, so let's see. You can verify Docker is running. Great. Let's do that. Docker V. There it yes. is. Hey. Um, and then we want to run Docker Compose up from the project root directory. So that's where I am. So I'm going to do Docker Compose up. I love this semi-transparent yep. thing so I can see through to the command. I feel like that was a... Definitely. That iTerm stuff is love configuring these things. So what's happening now, we um, we make the uh, the system work locally on our machine because mm -hmm. as a developer, you, you need to develop um, your code locally, make sure it works. So there is going to be, as, as we mentioned, a React app 
using an API for Node, mm -hmm. and Node using MongoDB, I guess, for the database. Looks and we like have it. a fully production system. Yeah. Okay. It will take a couple of uh, seconds, I guess. Again, this is the, the first setup. You only needed to, to do it once, um, as as in uh, a new uh, day, uh, any new tip. Okay. Yeah, and, and and again, you know, that's a very efficient thing. Like when I was working at at IBM, it took it took people weeks to get to the point where their whole dev environment was set up because it was this step was here, but then there was also a follow up step where somebody had to like you had to figure out who had the environment variables, and then you had to go like ask them and prove that you worked there and then ask for the them to dm you the plain text of all of the sensitive data that the company had so that you could paste that into your environment variable uh, your dot n file uh, and most of it was out of date but they were like we're not quite sure which ones of these are good or bad so just copy paste the whole thing it's six thousand lines don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i don't ruin, i don't want to ruin it for people but we thought about having a quest about everything's working but you have a secret that you need or a key, an API key that you need to get from someone from the company. <laughs> and you have the whole company structure in the workflow in the snack and you need to find it out. So this is a quest that we playing with the idea for this. <laughs> Cause again, mimicking real life. Yes. Right. Like th this is, this is the whole thing, right? Like you, yeah. You think that development is about skill and you think that advancement exactly. in a career is about being able to just do the hard technical code stuff. But I swear, 95% of this stuff is how do I get somebody who doesn't want to do something to give me that one thing that I can't get myself so I can do the task that I have? How do I convince somebody that what I'm trying to do solves their problem in a way that gets them to approve it instead of saying, no, 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 this needs to be my idea. Like so many <laughs> like advanced skills are just about communication, the, the politics of the office, the um, the, knowing where to look, knowing what to Google, knowing even what patterns are so that you can just dive in and figuring out, figure out what's going on inside of your own company. Um, and I always say like the, the, the senior mindset, like when you have a bug, mm. fixing the bug, this is the, 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 the easier part. Like this is the easiest part to change the, the line. Like when you are working the team, you need to understand the impact for the users. Where exactly does it fail? how to write the test that this bug won't happen again, how to communicate again to the support what happened exactly and how to solve those issues. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot about development or software development is not just the right writing the code. Yeah, absolutely. I see that uh, definitely not Ness has joined the chat and I'm suspicious. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> So um, looks like it's working, right? Getting close, getting close. Oh, building fresh. Uh, okay, building fresh packages. Um, yeah, I think Script start. Here we go. Dev server. Almost. This is the. This feels like it's going to be the last thing before we see this thing running. Yes, and let's see what uh, Nessel uh, asking us to do. Just for the context. Um, if Docker's working correctly, okay, let's go try it and see if it's happening. API ping. Okay. Okay, that worked. Okay. Okay, that worked. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yes. No. If everything is working properly, you'll be able to create a new user on the front end. So we detected that the API working, right? This is so also really clever. So, so you have some way of uh, when I clicked my local host, it's communicating through Docker to ping back to your Snack chat so that yes. I don't have to go back and do a, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Exactly. And there's validation here. Cause like, I imagine if this was broken, there's there's maybe a troubleshooting loop or something that would Definitely. happen. Definitely, like let's ask Ness for help. Like help me, I'm stuck, something like this. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. So just so, hits right so back stuff with like the, this. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Okay. So, so here I am. Have I've the, got my the back end working. Yep. Yes. All right. So we'll do one of these. Do one of these. 
and we'll sign up. Okay. Okay, I've so done it. So now we have localhost, we backend with everything, and Ness already detected that you created a user from the front end. <laughs> okay, so let's see. We can run all scripts in the next quest on one of the containers created by Docker Compose up. You can use Docker exec to run commands on a running container. Okay, cool. So my environment is ready. That's maybe the fastest dev environment setup I've ever had uh with yes. docker so excited about that it, everything just worked i'm happy uh let's update the readme file and submit a pr okay all right i can do that so um you're gonna tell me what to do automated response yes so <laughs> you just really need funny. to <laughs> okay yeah so let's see so we want one of these first setup to do all right, so I can go do that. So I'll come back here, or no, I already have this open. Over here, I'm gonna go to the readme, and I'm going to say, let's see, one, install Docker, and we got Docker over here. Uh, run Docker, oh, no. Check that it works with Docker V, uh, CD into the root of this repo, run Docker compose up. Okay, so that goes in here and the, the ask was to do readme file submit a PR I can do that so I'm going to open a new tab over here move in to okay and let's see we've got a readme change so I'm going to get check out a new branch and we're going to call this I don't know I'll use my own my own setup here so initials followed by what I did so uh, readme install uh, instructions and then we can get add everything. Great. Get commit. Uh, we'll do docs. Add setup instructions. And then I'm going to push. We'll just do origin. What do I call this? There we go. And I'm going to use the GitHub CLI because I'm lazy. And I'm going to do GitHub BR create. And I've already written a good... Thing. Oh, we've got a pull request template. All right, let's use that. And the description. Oh, why did I choose? What did I? What have I done? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll just say. Uh, let's see. Added setup instructions for local dev. And then we're gonna do Control X. Yes. Good. And then I'm gonna submit. Yes. And now I have opened my first pull request. Yes. And Vanessa already <laughs> checked this out. Vanessa's all and over it. Yes. And she already approved it. Nice. All right. Let's do... It's already... Oh, it's so fast. Okay. Yes. Great. Get it merged. I guess we got to wait okay, for everything. Okay. We'll but... but... Pay attention to what we did here. Like most of the tutorials or the workshops that we that I did would end up setting up the, the, the system locally, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we really want to l teach people best practices. Right. Okay. You got a new system. Why not make the readme better? Why not make the documentation better? Remember, you chose documentation, communication. Like this is crucial part for every engineer that no one teach you in class, right? Uh, so we do need to investigate things that might be hidden on your day-to-day -day or, or things that you don't pay attention to, uh, on your day-to-day. -day. And we think those kind of skills or the, this kind of mindset mm -hmm. is so important, okay? That's why we want to have a dedicated task to change the readme or update the readme. Yeah, I, that totally makes sense. Okay, so we've got our changes approved, and then yes. nobody told me how to do right, it, so I'm going to squash and merge because that's what I like. Okay. 
your call. Okay, so I'm going okay, to... And let's see. You can delete. You yeah, can I'll delete you, the branch. Delete, yeah. Let's do cleanup. And then we'll check out main. All right, let's talk to Ness. Maybe I have jobs. Yes. Click here when I'm ready for my... You crush the list dib. Nice, nice, nice. This okay. Project. Click in here. Okay, click here. Yeah. Man, I am already loaded. Did everybody see that? Got like 870 anything bucks. Yes, if you like press the, the X uh, to, to dismiss it. Okay, I'll uh, let's continue. Show me my yes. invites. Okay, I'll do that later. So you have invites. Okay, I so got you get extra blue coins. coins. You have some kind of achievement. Nice. You can hover them and see what it's like. Got it. You got tons of stuff. From oh boy, the I'm killing it. Quest and killing quest. it. Yes. And you have all the squeals. All right. Yeah, so look at this. I got my my setup score. I'm I'm about to level up. Communication I'm doing. I'm doing okay. Uh back end, front end database. We got stuff happening, right? This is great. Um yes. love that. So and I'm you gonna... can see Yes. So this is the next quest. It's a little bit harder. So okay. let's keep up the base. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go here. All right, <laughs> it's me. Uh, run the following command on your repo. Okay, so let's give that a shot. I'm just gonna get back to our main branch here. And then we'll pull, there we go. All right, and so now I'm going to uh, run that actual command, which was start quest. Actually, start quest behind the scene, checking on main and pulling up. So you did oh. it, so it's great. <laughs> yes. Good, okay, great. <laughs> Remember how I said that we have the ability to refix everything you do with your um, uh, repo? So this is the magic. Like every time you move between quests and everything, uh, or between dibs, we are able to put in in the right spot. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, cool. So let's go ahead and add a single product to the DB, then get to its page in the system online. So that would be not this one, this one, maybe. Yes. Let's so go to the marketplace. Okay. So I need to add a database. And yes. my database is emptier, add a single page to the DB. Um, so my database surface is where? Settings, URL of profile picture. Okay. There's so this my is actual... kind of a quest. Yeah, you, you right. So I got to figure out how this is. works. Um, yes. So in order to add this, I'm going to have to go look at the code. So let's dig exactly. in a bit. This is what you, you would do as a developer, right? Mm-hmm. So I see, uh, let's see, index.js middleware. Now I'm not going to bother with that. This is an express app. So we're going to go to routes. I'm going to look at the API items. That seems right. I want to add an item. So router params with the item param. Okay. Um, can I add a new one though? Get auth optional. Promise all. Feed, post, auth required post, payload ID. Okay, so I want to send a new item and my item needs to have item created. And then maybe we can uh, dig in here for our model. So this is what an item looks like. All right. And probably I could find some way to, to dig in here and make all that stuff work, but let's see if I can. Let's see, I should be authed already, right? So I should just be able to find my auth code here. Am I overcomplicating this? No, no, 
this is exactly and there is no one way there is like a couple of ways some of some of us will die uh, dig the, the the back end and see what is the request and maybe use i don't know postman to, mm-hmm. to create a post request some of us will, might feel more comfortable with the with the front end mm-hmm. and will travel the 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 front end app and see if there are a specific page or a specific um, API call to this specific post request, mm-hmm. and that's okay. In the end of the day, what we're gonna change, uh, wh- what we're gonna check uh, as as the as as Wilco, is if you were able to create an item, and we just want you to to travel around the application, get familiar with the code, and understand that when you get to a new team and you get to a new product. You just need to explore what are the options. No one gonna tell you and walk you through the code and the product and the pages, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I go to item, not found, right? So that's the that's the expectation is that it's not found. Um, but I need to be able to post to this, and what I want to post to it. See, I have postman. Let's use that. So I'm gonna open up, and and, and we do want people to like Google out. How to send a post request? Mm-hmm. Right? This is what we want to do. Okay, so we are here at a post request, and I need to figure out how to actually do that. So I need my item, which is going to be one of these, right? Uh, ref ID. I can probably leave that off. Seller. I'm probably going to need my own user ID if I can find that. And okay, what about go to let, let's do the other way around. Okay. Like, let, let's let's say uh, let's assume we work to spec and you probably figure out like postman uh, API and the body, the body field, right? Mm-hmm. This is like you, you nailed it from the, the the API standpoint. Let's go to the other way around. Let's um, um, let's see how the front end look like. Okay. And maybe we can figure out from there. Okay. So let's go to front end. Got my source. We've got our index uh, that gives us routes, which gives us a path just for our app. Let's see if there are more components in here. Item list, item preview. See editor. That might be something. Item submitted. Let's see. So this is our editor page, field, item title. All right, that looks promising. So maybe yes, so let's just add another see route. Who's gonna run it. Okay, so I'm going to let's see where where are the routes? Where are the routes? Here? Yes. And we're in the app. There are a couple of routes, right? In the app, there were a couple of, so I only see this route in app. There are and routes. There is, yes. Oh, yes. okay. I, I got too deep here. Let's see. Item ID editor. All right. So I can just go to editor. Okay. okay so we need 3001 just over here. Oh, look at that. That was way easier than what I was about to do. So we can say, um, let's go with, uh, we'll go with Corgi Pants. Um, we'll need a an image, so we'll go to Unsplash and just get one of these. That one seems fine. Get the image link, head back over here. And publish. Okay. Nice. So, so again, there is no right way or wrong way. You can go throughout the back end or throughout the front end, and that's okay. And you learn throughout the way. Okay. So you have an item in the system, and that's fantastic. Um, but would you put cargo pants and eighty nine? Your first choice. <laughs> so we detect. We have all kinds of mm-hmm. hooks throughout the way. So we know exactly where you stuck. Mainly about where you stuck, 
uh, in diffuse stack so we are able to help you uh, so you know how to add one item got it and then i need and to look at seeds which was in the back end yes and that runs yarn seeds which tells me to create a seeds file Okay, so I'm I'm gonna run it and let's see what happens. Um, using a script, I went for the script, script seeds, so I can run docker exec backend seeds. Uh, docker exec. Um, what did I do wrong? I think. Uh, um, Anything backend here. You have uh, Docker exec minus minus it. Anything backend. Oh, I see. Yes. I need to format it a little bit better. Is the bash included here? You you can use bash, and then you will you will have terminal on the the Docker machine, or you are able to uh, run a specific command like yarn seeds. Okay, so I want to run yarn seeds. Couldn't find a package JSON. Oh, in... maybe a backend, uh, CD backend, and then your seeds. Mm -mm -mm. Doesn't like CD. Okay, let's go with bash uh, because I'm not sure what exactly um, the the right path. Okay, and so, then where we are now. So we can go with CD. Backend. Couldn't read, couldn't Backend. find a package. Okay, so I'm just going to move in here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Please it's create great. seeds file. Okay. So. What you got, Nas? <laughs> Oh. So you need we need to start with uh, creating one other users, one other product, and one other comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we need to create uh, with okay. our seed script. So in my seeds file, I would let's see, it's going to run yarn seeds. Yarn seeds is going to run whatever I want. Let's see if there is a let's see. Tests maybe. This isn't built for me, is it? You're gonna make me write a script. Yes, you're gonna write a script. Uh, okay. All right. So um, I'm going to do something like in tests. We could do a like a. There's probably a better way to do this, but I'm gonna do fixtures and uh, db seeds. Dot js. And then we could do something along the lines of, um, I want to uh, users and we'll do like <sighs> array bill 100. And then we can map and get the item and we'll do, I don't know, like got to figure out what the user type is. We've got a validator, which means user schema, method, set password, generate. There's not like a fake. So I could install something like faker, but I feel like I don't want to do that. So instead... Whatever you like. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do, because I have this this in front of me here, just going to grab this, come back out here, and we are going to straight up fake this with an iterator number, right? So we can do something like lowercase and unique, and we will do something like fake, fake user, and then we'd number. Uh, email, we can do the same thing where we can do fake user one at anythink.com. 
Um, bio. I and the, I and not one. In the, oh in yeah. The string. Pair this is why we are doing uh, pair yeah. programming, right? <laughs> Uh, bio, we'll just say test bio image we can do. We need something. So let's grab another unsplash image and we will just say person. Um, great. You look like a person. And then we can open the image in a new tab. We want this to be square. And I think we can just do that if we do with 14, we'll just do like a 400 and height 400 is that going to do it there we go actually let's do a uh a fun stuff there is like lorem ipsum like random text uh -huh. there is lorem ipsum for images okay okay what are you feeling lorem ipsum images i think how it like yes so google lorem ipsum images pick some and you will get yes Okay. And yes, take something like this, and you get a random image every time. Okay. So and let's pick one of them. Got it. Does it have like a category where I can say people, or are we just we just rolling on whatever we mm, want? I'm not sure. Image details. I, I, would love I to don't have care. A dogs category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this will be fine. We'll just do one of these. Yes. Okay. So we'll throw one of these in there. Yes. And roll, uh, everybody's a user. We don't have any admins in this system. Favorites, we can make empty. Yes. Following, we can make empty. Hash and salt, I'm leaving. I'm going to make the assumption that yes. this will generate on its own. Definitely. Okay, so that should be our users. Um, and let's start by just console logging this. And make sure that it does what we expect. So, please create seeds file. Right, I have to actually run it. Um, that means I need to do node. And it's going to be, we called it uh, backend, or no, we're in backend. So, test fixtures, test fixtures, db seeds dot js try that one more time array fill oh no i'm bad at i'm bad at javascript let's figure out how that works um oh, let's see js create array with 100 elements i feel like if people will have access to my googling google history they will understand how much i don't know how to program <laughs> like I googling all the time how to like for an object. <laughs> okay, and we didn't actually need this, so we can just all right, try that one more time. I think this will do it. One hundred empty items. No. What? Array from. Does that do it? There we go. Okay, so here's all of our fake users. Um, so now we have uh, 100 fake users. We can do the exact same thing for our other types. So we'll do items. And the other thing that I needed was, where are you at, Ness? Uh, and 100 comments. All right, so comments are going to be in here. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we want to change all of these to fake comment. And then we'll just go figure out how to actually use that. So uh, let's go to the comment type. And we've got body seller item. Uh, the object ID is a user ID, which I don't have, which means, can I just types object ID of user? So we, we need to like to save the user 
and then we'll get auto generated id right oh okay okay so we'll have to and then in the items items are up here we have our schema which we'll drop in here and why didn't that work item paste there we go all right so we've got a slug and so that slug can be fake item title will be fake item i description uh we'll just do test description image we can do the same thing favorites count uh we'll just default to zero so i'm going to ignore that one entirely comments we'll make empty tag list uh we can do test tag and the seller needs to be can i is it optional because it doesn't look like it's marked required no we need to save the user and then we'll be able to have user id okay so this needs to move up then all right so um this this will be a to do this body will be a this is a test comment seller we need item we need so save items um all right so now that we have these we need to put them into mongo which means that we need to use our database which is how do we actually get to this db seeds i need to save these products which i'm going to do through here but now well, let's see how much time do we have left we got a, like 20 minutes 25 minutes so okay. Let's see app.js, I think. This App is where we initialize some stuff. App.js, which will give us our secret production, get yeah. our models. Uh, no, no, we uh, a little bit up. Yeah, a little bit. Mongoose connect. And process. Yes, button. this is what we need. Mongoose okay. connect, right? Okay. okay, okay. So we get one of these. And I need to also right. include mongoose, which will be up here. Right. And do I need anything else? That should be fine for now. So I'm going to come up to the top, do one of these, do one of these. All right, so now that I've got Mongoose, I need to remember how to insert things with Mongoose, which I can look for. Mongoose set debug true now. Okay, so it's gonna be in here probably mongoose mongoose model item okay so then probably gonna need these how did we get these items though yeah item find one okay so i'm just gonna drop these Sorry. in here and then we yeah, want you probably to... have some kind of Let, let's see the post post request and see what's going on there yeah item seller find item count item dot save so here is our it's a dot save new item with the thing okay so for each of these we need to set up a loop and we can do something like do for each or no we want it back so for each of these we'll do user and then we want to uh user equals new user and that should give us our our user and then we will we're gonna have to set that which we can deal with later but I want to dot save, and then we'll be able to pass the items ID out. Okay, yeah. so 
we will then do user.save. I did that wrong. I, oh, lowercase. User.save. Right. Then we get our DB item. And in here we can do stuff, which would include doing what I'm going to do, which is uh, just setting user ID, which will leave fake empty for now. And then we'll just set the global and use one user ID. DB item. How do they do this? We get into two JSON four. Wait, what? No, we don't need a two JSON item. We, we have an object. We can just, we can just do like hand. an. Yes, an ID. Okay. Or uh, underscore ID, I guess. Oh, that's right, because this, this is, is one for. of those. Uh, okay, so we'll get the first user ID out of there. And now yeah. that is done. So then what we'll be able to do is get our user ID and drop that into here. Good. And then we need to do the, the same. The problem is this is this is async. It is. Right? You are correct. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So we need, we need a f async function. Save fake users and that we'll do one of these and we want to just broke a bunch of stuff didn't i yes i did <laughs> okay now we get to remember how all of this stuff works so i have my async function it's going to do something async out here which might honestly just be easier to put into a for loop so that I don't have to figure out the async mess of all of that. I agree. Yeah, so I'm going to just switch this out to a for uh, user in users. And then I think everything stays the same if I'm remembering how code works. Yeah. Okay, but I can then await. Right. Uh, and then ta-da, I think. Is the chat freaking out right now? I think, <laughs> I think this is working. Huh? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Um, okay. So yeah, I think this will work. So we got, uh, we got that working and I should be able so to get... then say again. Yeah. So let, let's get items into the, um, after the loop. Yeah. Right? So get items after the loop. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Put so it we can into just, the yeah, acid. yeah, yeah. So we'll just do the whole thing as one big function. I got, I get what you're saying. Now that'll, that'll be easier than what I was about to do, which is string together a bunch of So we'll do uh, save fake data, and then we don't really need that to be global, but I'm going to do yeah. it anyway. So we'll just also stick an item ID in here, and then we're going to do exactly the same thing for this. Yes. And it will be item in items this is not going to work the way that i'm doing it because we have a duplicate declaration so let me fix that we'll change this one to user as a shorthand so that i don't have to figure out how to break all my stuff here um that'll be fine and then down here we're going to do the same thing uh we will change this one to be mm. I hate it. We're doing that. We're doing that. Nobody look at me. Doing this. And, and we then... need new item instead of new user. Okay. And then we'll stick the item in here. And then down here, we're going to change 
item ID to be that's that's scoped, so that should be fine. Um, and yeah. then we can change. Oh, I screwed this up anyways by calling it DB item. I don't care. All right, and then okay. we'll be able to set that item ID, so that's done. And then we can come down and here and do the same thing. One more. This one's going to have the uh, user ID, and this one's going to have the item ID. And we will run the same loop, except this will be comment. Needs to be capital. We'll call this one C. All right. So scoping actually. And we was don't need the, the if for item ID. That is true. We don't need any of that. So we can do actually just one of these and everything's fine. So then down here, instead of running that, we will run uh, whatever I called this function, which is save fake data. Yeah. And then we, we need to to somehow um like after it finished we need to to finish that the script right then system or exit or something like this in a node script it, it won't just complete yes oh yes um, save fake data then like after the promise reject uh, complete then um, I don't know, system exit or what is it? Node. Uh, what is it? What would it be? It's a process exit. Yeah. Um, yes. And then we can do like a catch error and we'll do a console dot error because I have a feeling I made at least one mistake in this. And then we will process dot exit. Okay, so let's give that a shot and see how we did. Yes. What is, did I change anything in here? I didn't change anything in here, did I? Yeah. I started changing things in here and didn't actually finish. Okay, so let's run back here and let's try it again. Fingers crossed, chat, here we go. Nope, Fingers screwed crossed. up. Schema hasn't been registered for model item. Okay, this is the part I was confused about because we were saying, get this thing going. So in here, something happens that's registering our items in the app so let me close up the front end let's go back to app and we have mongoose right and so in mongoose yes. we do all of these things and then we require these okay that's what was right. that's what was yes. missing so let's get back up here do one of these and then we'll try one more time nope i'm missing Module not Okay, found so I think DBCs. this is the okay, now we're the, uh, the path. Like slash slash uh, dot find... dot slash dot dot slash. Because this is not in the same directory. So I'm in fixtures. That should get me up to models. That should work. Dot dot slash dot dot slash. Maybe yes. source? I think this is right. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So let's run it one more time. Okay, closer, mm -hmm. closer. Parameter yes. obj to document must be an object. Got zero. So I screwed mm -hmm. something up. Uh, current URL parser trace deprecation. No, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Object parameter error, and that is happening at DB seeds thirty one. Let's go to DB seeds thirty one, and that <clears> is where I'm passing in an incorrect <laughs> object type. So, my array map should be clearing one of these, and it's, okay, so this is because I'm doing for in, not for of. Mm. Uh, JavaScript. <laughs> okay, one more time. One more time. This is the one. I believe in us, chat. Let's see. Looking good, looking good. Okay, let's get book to our app. Did I do Fresh the thing? It. Once oh, you're done, let's get open to our PR. app. To our app. Okay, let, let's go to this our local. This app. This app. Got you. Yes. Okay. Who wow. Ta-da! Nice one. Look at us go. 
All right, so now we've done that. So let's uh, let's see where we are. Oh, I'm in Docker. Let's exit, change. Okay, so we're gonna add, great. And we will get, check out a branch and we'll call this one um, add seed data. Okay, and I get commit and we'll say feature add seed data. All right, so I'm gonna push. No, add seed data. And then we will GitHub PR create. Add the seed data, uh, pull request, yeah. For local dev. Yes. Okay, submit. And once again, we are off to the races. Where's Ness? There yes. you are. All right. So let's talk a little bit about why it is important. Okay, seeds data. Mm -hmm. um, I think that in most cases, uh, like the, the experience of new developer, how fast she or he is able to work on product, work on local dev that they are able to test, mm -hmm. to, to, to play. And like the best experience for me was to get into a team where you just write a script that is up, write a script, you get a, 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 a production like data. You are able to play with a product that is close as possible to production. Mm -hmm. I've been in teams that your local dev is connected to the production database with some kind of safeguard. This makes me, as a developer, very, very happy and eager to, uh, to work and easy to work. Mm -hmm. And the developer experience, developer experience, something that we are talking about, uh, a lot about recently, is much better. Okay? So this is what we want to like, teach here. Right. Uh, because we talked about setup and onboarding and what it's like to uh, be in a new team. And right. right now, what's happened behind the scene we are running Wilco action that run your seeds data, seed mm -hmm. script, and make sure that the back the databases actually have some um, some data there. So it's not like a shallow checks on the files, but it's also running some scripts. Mm -hmm. It's good that it's doing that okay. because I did zero testing. It definitely didn't validate that this worked. I just looked and saw that the page loaded, and I was like, ah, oh, products. Who cares about users or comments? <laughs> <laughs> right? And I think actually if so we wanted if to validate that, we'd go to the first product, fake item zero, because that's going to have all of the comments. Oh, but it doesn't. No. And oh, so we might have actually broken our comments. Uh, and I guess we'll find out, right? Yes. Yes. So this will tell us. Tune. Take, check the deals. How much? Maybe refresh it. It should be ready in a sec. Let's see. Uh, Job is waiting for a host problem. runner. Oh, uh, that's always a bummer. OK. Um, yes, GitHub. So it'll happen soon enough. And uh, yes. it looks like that's probably about as far as we're going to get today. We've got about 10 minutes left. Um, yes. What? What else should we do? We got a couple people in the chat who are uh, sounding pretty excited. It sounds like we've got a lot of people who are in the the waiting list for Wilco, which is which is pretty exciting to see. Um, chat, do you have any questions for Shem about Wilco other than when will I get invited? Uh, I, <laughs> but uh, any questions <laughs> or or requests? What do you, what do you want to learn? What are you you know what are the things that you have a hard time learning when you um, when you're thinking about leveling up? Uh, and, and Chem, like, what's what's one of those for you? What's a, a thing that you feel like you wanted something like Wilco so that you can level up on it? So I think we have a couple of directions. Um, one of them is more like the straightforward um, kind of quest, like we factor this um, code, add this feature, um, move, like, take this React um, component uh, from class component to hooks, mm -hmm. uh, move from, I don't know, context to Redux and all kind of like very specific stuff. Mm -hmm. The other one is more general for best practices. 
okay? Let's write some tests. Let's get a bug from, uh, from the, the support, write a test to make sure it won't happen, how to run unit tests, how to write um, good encapsulation, abstraction, mm -hmm. um, stuff like this. Very, very generic. Doesn't mean if it's Node or Python or, or stuff like this. The other one is more taking to the cloud, okay? How to take your um, React app and uh, deploy it to Netlify. Mm -hmm. How to how to make um, integrate observability tools. Mm -hmm. How to um, how to work with monitoring. How to detect bottlenecks with this um, with these tools or another. How to work with logs, how to um, set up monitor uh, alerts. Um, so those are like how to work in production environment. Mm -hmm. And the 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 next level is once you have a production environment, how to handle load, how to detect bottlenecks, how to add an uh, index to the database, how to migrate from one another to a, to another. Those kind of quests are very very hard to mimic. Or, or to uh, to to explain mm -hmm. when you have like very small uh, setup. Once yeah. you are able, we are able to create those kind of setup very complex with data mesh and, and network. So we are able to take it to the next level. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So uh, we've got a question from the chat. Is is Wilco paid? Like, is this a service that I as a developer would uh, like pay for? Is it done through employers? Is there a free tier? So right now we have a free tier for, for individuals. You are able to get into the waiting list. We will listing every now and then a couple of hundreds of people. So they're able to, uh, to play and it's free. Um, the, w you will also have um, a version for companies um, to play as a team, as a company, as a team lead. You want to uh, let your team or as a VP R&D, you, you, you want to let your uh, department mm -hmm. to practice skills. You are able to to see what they're uh, what they're practice on. You have more voice there. You are able to play as a group. Nice, nice. This is very exciting stuff. I think this is uh, this is really cool. It looks like GitHub's not going to let us finally finish this PR here. So um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll, cancel. Yeah, cancel rerun. and retry. Not sure what's going on with the uh, PR checks. Um, We're going to rerun failed yes. jobs. And see if it runs this time. Okay. Um, and let's see, that one worked. So let's get into this one. Starting, job is waiting. Okay, so it might just be that we're not going to get this for a little bit because GitHub is under load. And that's okay. We will, uh, you'll be able to follow along. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's happening. Yes. Yes. All right. So it I'm going to go back out minute, to my pull request. And we'll watch this and get this, uh, this PR review. Something is off. Make sure all the checks pass. Yep. Okay. So that's because I canceled okay. it. Now we're running right. again, and hopefully, this is cool. Yeah, good that, that we get the feedback. Um, yeah. Then once that runs, all right, so while we're well, waiting for that to run, I'm going to do another shout out to our captioning. We've had Amanda with us all day. Thank you very much, Amanda, from White Coat Captioning. And that is made possible by our sponsors, Netlify, NX, and Backlight, all kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. Uh, make sure you go check out the schedule, too. We've got a lot of really fun stuff coming up. Uh, even more is on its way from the show where we're going to do a uh, script kit. So developer productivity by writing JavaScript right on your computer. We're going to do uh, accessibility tests with Storybook. We're going to learn more Motion 1 with Matt Perry, uh, Rust for JavaScript developers, Auth0 Actions, lots and lots of fun stuff, plus a few things I haven't even put up on the site yet. So make sure you head over and add on Google Calendar. That'll put all the episodes on your Google Calendar. Uh, or you can follow on Twitch to get a notification when I go live, or you can head over to the YouTube to figure out when episodes have been posted. Make sure you subscribe and ring the little bell because that is very important for my ego. Um, Shem, anything that you want to uh, have people go and check out? I'm going to drop the link to Wilco again. Anywhere else that someone should go if they want to learn more or get started? Um, you can follow us on Twitter. We are pretty active there. Okay, um, so that's we'll try to... Wilco, right? Right. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback. We hopefully get everyone on the platform. We'd love you uh, to try it out. Uh, we'll invest a lot of time, uh, the team, 
take a lot of efforts there. Uh, I think, um, yes, the PR already approved um, and you are able to um, merge it, I guess. Looks like I'm mm -hmm. going to, I have my, let's see, can I dismiss oh, this? Refresh. No, no, oh, yeah, refresh, refresh, I think. Uh, it's needed to refresh. There it is. You okay. Approved. So yes. there we go. We squash um, and merge. And you all and we already made it like completed three quests. You have a couple of more if you want to play it. Uh, there is a whole category uh, for stuff on the back end, on the front end, on a database. Some of them are more easy. Some of them are more advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and again, um, we'd love you to try it out. We'd love you. Uh, to play, give it a chance, and more than all, we would love you, uh, to hear your feedback. Absolutely. All right, so uh, chat, a couple of y'all said that you are trying to get into the platform. It looks like I have some invites, so send me a message on Twitter, uh, and I can get you one of those invites so you can get in and try Wilco. Uh, Chem, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We're going to go find somebody to raid, y'all. Uh, thank you all for spending some time with us, and we will see you next time.